Hello, this is Carpaccio with a weekly daily report. It is the Cosmic Astrological Weatherman. Let's look at what's going on here. It's looking a little cloudy with a chance of cold snow showers. <laughs> but from outer space, it's looking pretty sunny. Get off the planet for a little while here. And I know this is a weekly report, but there are things going on that I want to talk about today that are more than just local. As you can see here, moon is going around this way, right? So we just had the full moon because the Earth was right dead center in between. And you can see the moon is very close to the Earth right now, closer than she ever gets. So it's like super cool. And this new program is driving me nuts, but we're going to go for it anyway. Now, some of the aspects that I want to be discussing with you today are, number one, Venus. Conjunct, it was conjunct Saturn last week. It's going to be conjunct Pluto on Friday. Let's look at it. Here we go. This is what's kind of bad about this program. It's to scale a little bit. So, ah. so you can see from Earth, if you drew a straight line passed through Venus, Zingo, you would come out to Saturn. Right? So, and if you continue that, we're gonna go. We're gonna go out that. Way, you know, just keep in mind that it is coming up to this conjunction with Pluto. We're gonna go out a little farther. There's Neptune, and oh, there's Pluto. <laughs> I mean, you can't see the Earth anymore, <laughs> but you can kind of see that we have a Saturn-Pluto conjunction going on, <clears throat> and Saturn is going to continue forward. We're going to have this Saturn-Pluto, you know, conjunct this year, but even ex more exact next year, 2020. And by 2020, Jupiter will also have moved around. And this is where everybody's talking about the Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto conjunction of 2020 as being such a, you know, a biggie. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is that what I talked about last week, and this is the idea I want to give you is that, you know, these things, yes, you know, it's conjunct on Friday, but as you can see here, okay, I mean, these planets move slowly. You know, these conjunctions go on for a week, right? We can see here also, let's just go a little bit closer, this Mercury square Jupiter. If you look at it, stop there, right? Earth to Mercury and you take a 90 degree turn, right? And you are gonna go out to Jupiter. So that Mercury square Jupiter is on Friday, okay? It's exact on Friday, but you can kind of see that it, you know, it's pretty effective now. What else was I talking about? Mercury conjunct Neptune. If you draw a line straight from Earth through Mercury, it's going out this way, we should find Neptune out here. Let's check it out. Ready? Here we go. Oh, there you go. Neptune, right out there, right? So you draw a line from Neptune. This is what I'm saying. There's these lineups with the inner personal planets with these outer slow-moving planets. What else did we have? A Mars-Uranus conjunction. Draw a line from Uranus going through Mars, and you are going to come to Earth. See what I'm saying here? See that? Earth, Mars, and if you recall, Uranus was right the heck out here. <laughs> And if uh, you want to get even farther, all right, let's go farther out. Let's go, uh, not, not in, dude. There you go. Oh, what's that? Eris. Yeah. 
Eris is way the heck out there. You draw a line through Eris. Uranus passed its conjunction with Eris, right? But then you would have Mars, Uranus, Eris going on. I mean, that's why these past few weeks have been so freaking intense and full of so much discord. As Mars the warrior, you know, conjoins with Eris, you know, and then Uranus is just like, oh my goodness gracious me. So I think that's enough. Uh, let me just uh, look at the uh, camera here and talk about some of what I see this meaning to all of us. Okay, I'm trying something a little different today. I'm going vertical. <laughs> and I am sitting at the foot of the Buddha. <laughs> Hopefully he will be helping me out here. This is probably going to be a very long Pele report. I hope that you are comfortable because I'm going to go outside the weekly uh, framework of the weekly Pele report to look at a much larger picture of what is happening. This is prompted by whatever spirit, you know, Venus coming into a conjunction with Pluto. Okay, and this is Pluto in the sign of Capricorn from 2008 to 2024. In addition, we can say that the United States of America was born with Pluto in Capricorn, and it will be having its Pluto return, the first Pluto return for the United States of America. You may feel it coming on now, but it's actually exact in February, July, and December of 2022. Yes, because the United States Pluto is at 27 degrees, 32 minutes of Capricorn. So it's not quite there yet but it will have its Pluto return and then in 2024 Pluto will go into Aquarius. So that to me this is the dawning, just the dawning of this 2000 year age of Aquarius. And so not only is Pluto moving through Capricorn but we know that the south node of the moon just transited by, right? And it is in the sign of Capricorn from November of 2018 to May of 2020. It's a year and a half of the moon's nodes moving through Cancer Capricorn. In addition, we have Saturn moving through Capricorn for two and a half years, okay? Saturn not moving into Aquarius until like March of 2020 pops up there for a little bit and then retrogrades back again. In addition to that, <laughs> next year Jupiter will be moving into, well actually December, Jupiter will be moving into Capricorn also for the grand Jupiter-Saturn-Pluto conjunction of 2020. What I would like to do for you today is to read to you some of uh, what my teacher, Jeffrey Wolf Green, uh, the founder of Evolutionary Astrology, um, wrote years ago. Let me see. I think it was in the 80s, yeah, that he first published this. 1986, yeah. Um, and he can say things a lot better than I can. So I'm going to be reading out of his book a little bit here. <laughs> Let me hold that up for you. It's Pluto, The Evolutionary Journey of the Soul, Volume 1. There is a Volume 2 that is also amazing. To me, this is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, astrology book ever written. And... It really goes deeply into the archetype of Pluto in Capricorn, and uh, he shares quite a bit about this. And um, let me just dig into it a little bit here, uh, because last week, again, 
You know, I talked about the yogic teachings around heterosexuality. I am a reporter. <laughs> this week, I am reporting to you another point of view, <laughs> another perspective, okay, coming from, you know, my teacher. And maybe next week, I will bring in somebody else. <laughs> I like to use these Bailey reports as, you know, just something to stir up and prod a little meditative contemplation, you know, so that we can all evolve and bring in this new age of Aquarius in its most highest beautiful form. So what Jeffrey says about this Pluto in Capricorn, and this is particularly, it's the same with what he's saying is it's the same with individuals born with Pluto in Capricorn. So all the, there we have a whole soul group incarnating right now, <laughs> okay, from 2008 to 2024, there is this whole energy and this energetic, okay, is happening on the planet as these souls are incarnating, whether the incarnating souls are actually, you know, helping to make it happen <laughs> or it's happening and they come in to join the game. Who cares? <laughs> the fact is, <laughs> you know, the matter is that, you know, this is the condition that we're in. We're working with this archetype of Pluto and Capricorn strengthened by the moon's nodes. So this is a particular window of a year and a half of even more intensity dealing with, the, with this particular archetype and the karma and the lessons associated with this archetype. And so one of the, you know, one of the first primary principles is that whenever Pluto is in a cardinal house or sign, it is an indication of the recent ending of an old cycle of evolution and the beginning or the birth of a new cycle. So I've talked about this changing of the guard. We are now in a changing of the guard. It is a time of a fall from power from those who have had power over a series of lifetimes, perhaps. Yes. I mean, I see America, the United States of America, as being the reincarnation of Atlantis and a lot of the, probably the same souls, <laughs> you know, that blew up Atlantis are ready to blow up everything again. <laughs> we have to really understand, and here's what I'm going to really be getting into today, and particularly with today's mantra, you know, is that we reincarnate and we have soul lessons and we have karmic lessons coming in from previous lifetimes. And just as a country or a nation has an identity at the birth of this new or this change into a new cycle, there is an insecurity, there is an instability we are in between cycles. And so this insecurity, you know, wants to create, and whether it's an individual or a nation, create laws, regulations, rules, customs, taboos, okay? You know, in order to define itself out of the beliefs and the philosophies of Sagittarius. So it's interesting now, particularly, to have Jupiter in Sagittarius expanding our understanding of what is true and meaningful and have all of this energy also going on in Capricorn where it's time to let go of the old and bring in the new. We can see the things happening with the Roman Catholic Church. Also, I've talked about this before, Jupiter square Neptune. This is the year of deciphering what is true, that's Sagittarius, and making it you is the Capricorn Cancer axis. So just as a nation will create maybe border walls <laughs> and boundaries or limitations, you know, we will also individually have our own belief systems our own evolutionary soul needs 
and need to find a place, a function, a social role. And this is what is also undergoing evolutionary change right now. Just as we can say the United States was born out of the philosophies okay, of democracy and personal freedom and religious freedom, that's Sagittarius, then it comes in and creates capitalism. Yes, putting this forward. Jeffrey points out that Marxism, okay, you know, gave birth, all right, to, you know, a society of communism and atheism. So we, we have the beliefs and the values and the philosophies and the truths of a group of social people come together to create societies, cultures, governments, and religions that have laws and rules and structures, however patriarchal, we have to understand that all of this has occurred under the patriarchy that's been going on for thousands of years. So we are in an even bigger cycle of transitioning, and we could say this is part. It's not only the beginning of the age of Aquarius, it is the, is the end of the patriarchy. So we are in this crux if you're not feeling it, you will. <laughs> we can say that, baby. <laughs> Let me read to you a little bit from, you know, what, you know, what Jeffrey has to say. So in the same way, okay, you know, that countries establish themselves and what's right and wrong in their morals and their ethics based morals are ethics put into practice. So the ethics are Sagittarius. Okay, and moral or immoral acts fall under Capricorn. Yeah, this is, that's my interpretation. <laughs> in the same way, individuals who have Pluto in the 10th house or Capricorn have needed to learn how to integrate their own philosophy and identity within the framework of a society, culture, or nation. Yeah? So what we have here is that all of us now in this soup, you know, in this transitionary time are looking for a social identity, a role to play in the society. And is the society open enough, free enough, clear enough? Is it reflecting the deeper values, needs, and evolutionary desires of, the po of its greater population. If not, it needs to change, right? It needs to evolve, to ever expand, to include what I call the age of Aquarius, unity in diversity, yeah? Now, I want to read some more here because, you know, he just goes right on, right on. So, and here's the other thing. If you were born, okay, with Pluto in the 4th or the 10th house, the moon's nodes in the 4th or the 10th house, or in the sign of Capricorn or Cancer, this is really, okay, this is part of your soul history, and, I, and you can look at your chart and see if what I'm reading to you today applies to you directly. That's what's so freaking cool about astrology, man. So freaking awesome. So, what this says is, that these people with Pluto in Capricorn, Pluto in the 10th house, South Node in the 10th house, these kind of signatures in the chart have been seeking social status, have been seeking social positions in their previous lifetimes in order to gain a firmer sense of security through their social position. So this is a vying for social status and power to make me feel even stronger and greater. Another aside that I have to bring in is that now we have Chiron moving into Aries, right? And this Aries is I having to do with Aries first house archetype has to do with identity. And this identity, of course, is square to the Capricorn Cancer axis. So our social status, and we'll see that it also gets into family, family genetics, family history, and even more. 
But in the past, these individuals, wherever we strive for social status and more power, it can create, okay, you know, the potential and evolutionary problems that can lead to are twofold. Number one, becoming overly identified with one's career, position, or status. And number two, manipulating and using others for one's own ends. Both can lead to abuse of power, especially if the person's entire sense of emotional and physical security is linked to his or her social power, career, or status. And it's very interesting to me to see now that, you know, years ago, Hello, man. I was like, you know, I was a carpenter. I was a teacher. I was an electronics engineer. But you know what? I didn't have a social status or a social. Now everybody does. With Facebook, with YouTube, with Instagram, we're all social. <laughs> we're all creating, okay, followers and likes and you know this and that and the other. And it's like it's like it's like everybody now. <laughs> You know, can have, you know, this and be doing things and saying things and dressing a certain way and going certain places. And I mean, having our social role, our social position or our social status dictate who we are or our, or, or we make an identity. It's called a persona. I've talked about the mask before. We create these masks. This is all having to do with Capricorn. Now the other thing that we have to bring up with this particular situation is that it is also tied in with this new beginning can also be a gender switch. We incarnate over and over and over again and we shift genders for evolutionary soul purposes. Okay? And I want to read to you what Jeffrey says about it so that you know I'm just the messenger. As the 4th house, 10th house Pluto individuals in almost all cases have switched gender in their most recent prior lives, sometimes the current life is the first experience in the opposite gender in many lifetimes. This usually signals that a state of imbalance has been reached and further evolutionary growth could not occur through the gender that came before. Thus. For evolutionary purposes, they have switched genders to promote balance and further growth. The resulting hormonal shift of the gender switch can create a variety of emotional moods and feelings that are difficult for the individual to relate to, let alone control. These emotions seem to have a life of their own. The evolutionary need is to become aware of the source or trigger producing the moods and emotions rather than being a victim of them. In this way, self-knowledge will grow. What are these feelings telling me about myself? An example of an individual who refused to accept this gender switch is Christine Jorgensen. Jorgensen was born a man, yet had a sex change operation to become the woman she once was. Uh, she had Pluto in uh, Capricorn, uh, in the ten no, Pluto in Cancer, uh, in the 10th house, conjunct the north node of the moon in Cancer. So, you know, uh, he, she had a, you know, a double, okay, a double emphasis, not only by sign, but also by house. And, of course, he goes into, you know, her, uh, you know, her whole chart, but you know, we really want to also um, go beyond. So now we have social status, okay, our, our social role, then we have our gender role, our gender identity, and what comes beyond that? <laughs> beyond this, <laughs> they are learning emotional lessons. One avenue through which these emotional lessons will occur is in family situations. This can involve either one or both parents, the marriage partner, or children, or both. 
The 10th house Pluto individuals commonly experience emotional shocks delivered to them by one or both parents, their children, or a spouse. These shocks force deep self-examination. The loss of a parent can also produce this effect. For example, anyway, he goes on and on. So here we also have situation. This is the family axis, Cancer Capricorn. So we can also look to see that the souls that are dealing with these particular lessons will incarnate into a family to enforce some of these lessons, often bringing with them, not besides maybe the death of a parent, but also highly judgmental parents or highly religious parents or parents that have strong boundaries, rules, and laws that this individual starts right off the bat dealing with powerful, deep emotions of I don't fit in or I don't belong or my needs are not being met. My individuality is not being recognized. I am different. <laughs> so, ju so just like we don't may, might not fit into our family, we may not fit into a limiting society. So we can see that, you know, Thailand... You know, I saw YouTube, 18 genders in Thailand. I've been to Thailand, right? You know, the, the she boys. And I mean, it's really an amazing different culture over there where there is not the stigma, right? You know, there is not the prejudice. There are, there are jobs and there are, you know, uh, acceptance of those who are in, okay, a transitionary stage. It can take two to three lifetimes, to accomplish this full gender switch. You've gone way out in one gender and, and this coming back can take a long, it's a long process. So we have the, we also have in Africa, other countries, other cultures that just honor the two spirits, the two spirited people, they call them. And they even take on religious roles, right? And then, of course, you know, we just have, you know, that we are in we are in a male body, but we, you know, we feel very feminine or we are in a female body and feel very masculine. So we have this difference between sex and gender in the patriarchy and in the past with our, you know, a lot of the religions have combined sex and gender. Hello, there's two <laughs> and your physical body determines you know, and, and, you know, and, and, and limits the expression of your identity through a gender switch or a gender motion. And if we really look at it, Cancer Capricorn, the moon's nodes moving through Cancer Capricorn, okay, they're there one-sixth of the time. That's two signs out of 12, hello. And then every day they go through the fourth and the 10th house, twice. So, you know, that's like at least a tenth of any given population is in a gender switch. And, and, and so we have deep emotional dynamics going on, okay, that affect our identity. And then we try to gain an identity through the society or the nation or the culture that we're born into. And it gets like even more frustrating because there's bigotry and prejudice and, you know, all, the, all this, you know, other energy going on. Okay. And this forces us back into ourselves. And this is the key. And this is what the mantra is about today. And this is what I want to, you know, really wrap this kind of thing up with here. The north node of the moon is in Cancer. The Pluto polarity point is in Cancer. Okay, this is a Capricorn issue, 10th house issue, Saturn issue that is balanced by, fulfilled by, evolved by this coming into a deeper reflection of myself beyond appearances, beyond my physical body or gender or sex, beyond the job that I have, beyond what people say about me on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, okay? Beyond what my parents have to say. It's coming home. Home. 
Home is where the heart is. It's coming into my emotional body. We evolve through our emotions and we need to gain. This is the whole process of cancer is gaining emotional self reliance, self security. I gain my security, not in my job, not in my family, not here, not there, not anywhere. I gain emotional security by knowing myself, <laughs> by connecting to my deepest soul. Cancer and the moon have to do with the past. So this can be past lives. Do a, do a rebirth, do a past life regression, do some hypnotic work, do some you know, emotional processing. Come deeply into your own identity. I, mean, I, I got one more quote here. I mean, I'm, you know, I don't like to just read to you through these things, but Jeffrey is so awesome. The polarity point is the fourth house or cancer. The evolutionary intent is that the individual learn to develop internal security identity completion and a personal fulfillment that is not bound up or linked to the need for success or social position. These individuals are learning how to see themselves without the trappings and security that their social function or career provide. So this can be a time, and, and he also states that one way that this can happen, of course, is through emotional shocks. You get fired, or President Trump gets impeached, <laughs> or the, you know, the cardinal gets removed from the church. I mean, we're having all kinds of examples of this in the greater, wider social realms, but each one of us may also be getting this personally in our lives, getting rejected from our family, getting rejected by society, getting rejected by the community that we thought we were going to, you know, just create a new paradigm community and all of a sudden it's not, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> so there's lots of ways that this goes about and the whole soul intention is for each and every one of us to delve deeply down inside and emerge out of. This is a passing phase. Like we say, this is the beginning, particularly through these next coming years, uh, 2019, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then in 24, shoo, Pluto goes into Aquarius, and I think we really begin. But we've got a lot of skeletons to clear out of the closet. We have a lot of karma for those that have abused or misused their social position or their standing in prior lifetimes. There's going to be a fall, yes, you know, of the old guard, like I said. And what we want to do is just like, you know, within all of this chaos and with all of this change, our security lies within our self. So the mantra for today is, what is my identity outside my social role? It's not what others think or say, but my connection to my soul. May you connect deeply with your infinite soul, having reincarnated, having come from multidimensional spiritual realms of love and unity into this world of polarity. The third dimension is polarized consciousness. We evolve through polarized consciousness. ready or not, like it or not. <laughs> That's the other part of Capricorn is grow up, maturity. We are mortal. Our bodies shall die. Our spirits shall live. But we must get on with it. And the positive thing that I can see is it's not just the old guard and many things and institutions that, you know, falling apart, you know, to where we can't really rely on, you know, our social roles or positions to define us. But... 
There's also the new guard, right? There are those that want. It's like, yes, get rid of the freaking system. <laughs> I can't wait for the society to change. It's like, you know, psh, we've incarnated now <laughs> to bring on this change, baby. <laughs> So, you know, it's if you're not too deeply, you know, needing the security of, you know, the, the system or your position or social status or whatever, you know, the, you know, you may be the one that's bringing in the revolution that's helping to tear down the limiting beliefs, the limiting structures and the limiting institutions so that there can be a more free, open expression of the diversity of soul beings that are now wanting to incarnate on our planet. So let's l bring out the red carpet <laughs> for, <laughs> you know, the characters that want to come in. One more time, if I can remember it. What is my identity outside my social role? It's not what people think or say, but my connection to my soul. Namaste. Aloha. So much love.